Hi, my name is Ali Shirsava from Bridget Digital and in this video we're going to talk about the right hand plane zero, how it mani manifests itself and try to explain it in a clear and intuitive way. So here I've got a buck converter and here I've got a flyback converter. Now the buck converter does not have a right hand plane zero but the flyback does. Let's see how these two operate and how the right hand plane zero shows itself within, within the way that the duty cycle works. Now if you look at the buck converter, when you switch, turn the switch on, you deliver power from input to the output and when you turn the switch off, you don't deliver power from the input to the output. It's very simple and straightforward. You turn it on, you get power. You turn it off, you don't get power. The filter here is just filtering out the rough edges of the turning on and turning off process of, of the power delivery. Um, the flyback converter, however, is a bit different. When you turn the switch on, the current flows here. And if you look at this dot convention, it will make this diode, in fact, reverse bias. So during the on period, actually, you're not delivering any power from the input to the output. The power that is being delivered is actually being delivered from the energy that was stored in the output capacitor from the previous cycles. So during the on period, there is no direct delivery. Now, when you turn it off, what happens is that the energy that is stored in this uh, coupled inductor or flyback transformer, if you will, during the on period gets delivered into the output. So during the on period, the current flows, energy gets stored in the flyback transformer, but this is reverse biased. During the off period, the power gets delivered from the primary side into the secondary side, from the input to the output. It feeds the load and it also replenishes the capacitor. So if you go to the next page, Let's assume that we've got a duty like this. Let's, for simplicity, assume that is 50%. Uh, let's say from there to there is 5 microseconds, and from there to there is also 5 microseconds. This is the on period, and this is the off period. So in a buck converter, you deliver power during this period, and you don't deliver power during that period. In a flyback converter, you're actually storing energy during the on period, and you deliver the energy to the output during the off period. Now let us assume that the load on the output changes, so you increase the load, and that will cause a dip in the voltage. The feedback loop will have to compensate for this. Now if the duty is increased, which will be the tendency of the feedback loop, let's say from 5 microseconds to 6 microsecond, in fact what is happening is that you've got, you have got less time to deliver the power. Remember that we said that in a flyback converter, you deliver the power during the off period. So you want to be delivering more power, but by the virtue of the fact that you've increased the duty, you're in fact, at the first cycle, you're delivering less power. So it's, 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 it's opposite of what you need to be doing. But what is happening during this period is that you're storing more energy during the on period and in the subsequent cycles this energy is delivered and this is the effect of the right hand plane zero the fact that you deliver the power during the off period and you somehow need to increase the duty but the feedback loop decreases it is how the right hand plane zero manifests itself and, in re and, and what will happen is that the duty will increase and you store more energy and in the subsequent cycles you deliver the, 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 the energy to the output. Now, we can look at that in the frequency domain and we can see the impact of a right hand plane zero. We know that a left hand plane zero flattens the curve, the, the, the gain curve by 20 dB and you get a phase rise. But a right hand plane zero still flattens the gain curve but you get a phase fall. So you lose phase and you lose phase margin. We're not going, we are now going to go to the lab and we're going to look at this on a flyback converter which does have a right hand plane uh, zero. Um, and see how this manifests itself in the frequency domain. One final thing before we go to the, to, 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 to the lab setup, it's extremely easy to tell which converters have a right-hand plane zero and which ones don't. All you have to do is look to see whether the diode is before the inductor or after the inductor. 
If the diet is before the inductor, you do not have a right hand plane zero. If the diet is after the inductor, you do have a right hand plane zero. If I were to draw a boost converter, which would look something like this, you will see that the boost will have a right hand plane zero because the diode is after the inductor. So let us go to the lab and show you the frequency domain measurement on a body 100. Okay, so here I've got my test set up. I have got a flyback converter here. I am measuring it, uh, the frequency response with the, with the body 100. Uh, and here we've got the uh, body analyzer switch. So if I start measuring, you will see that is my gain plot and this is my phase plot. You can see from the, this is the plant that we measured. You can see from uh, the uh, gain plot that you have got some low frequency offset. So it's, it's starting at around, I don't know, 18 dBs. And then it starts to roll off at around two kilohertz. So I have got a pole around here and then it's rolling off at a rate of 20 dB per decade. Um, we do not have a, we do not see at least the ESR zero in this plot, uh, mainly because the, the, the flyback that we're using has got lots and lots of ceramic capacitors as its output. However, if you look here, the gain starts to flatten. This is effect of a zero. Now we expect from a left hand plane zero, so that when you have a zero, the gain flattens and you get a phase boost of 90 degrees. But if you look at the phase here, you see that the phase, the phase is sort of going up is in fact going down. It's getting a little bit messy around here because we're approaching half the switching frequency, but you can clearly see that uh, as this gain flattens, we have got a zero, and you can see that the phase, its effect is from one decade below, the phase starts to roll off, and that is the right-hand plane zero. Okay. Now, the way to uh, compensate uh, a converter that has got a right-hand plane zero is to try and cross one decade ahead or earlier than the position of the right hand plane zero. So you want to be crossing around here, for example, uh, in this particular case. Now, this causes a problem if you use voltage mode control. The reason for that is that you need to cross a decade lower than the right hand plane zero, but on voltage mode control, you usually have a resonant bump around here. Now the resonant bump causes 180 degrees of phase loss, then if you're too close to the right hand plane zero, on top of it you've got another 90 degrees of phase loss, which will make it very difficult to stabilize. Also, this bump here in a voltage mode control, right, after the resonance, you have got um, a 40 dB per decade roll off, so, so you cannot cross that side, and if you, if you cross on this side of the bump, then you're conditionally stable because the, you're, you're on the left hand side of the resonant bump. And that is why the vast majority of the converters that have a right hand plane zero are stabilized using uh, current mode control. Hope you have enjoyed the video and look forward to seeing you in another one.